Hi everyone, welcome to episode 4. So in this episode we're going to be tackling climbing slopes. So to start off with, let us duplicate this uh, ground chord and just rotate it to get a nice little uh, slope in our game. And if we press play, you can see that we can actually already climb this slope, but uh, the problem is we climb it really, really slowly. And uh, ideally what we'd want is for the player to actually climb all slopes as if it was just moving along flat terrain. And afterwards we can apply some modifier to make it move more slowly uh, at greater angles. So let us go into our script, our controller 2D script, and uh, I should just mention the way we're going to be detecting the slopes is by looking at the uh, bottom most horizontal ray when we're moving, as that is what we know will be colliding with the slope. So in horizontal collisions, if we hit something, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the angle of the surface that we've hit. Now the way we do this is pretty simple because when our raycast hits a surface, it stores that surface as normal, which is basically a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. Now, uh, if we have two directions, we can obviously quite easily get the angle in between them. So the second direction that we use is global up. And I think it's pretty intuitive to see that uh, the angle in between our normal and global up is going to be the same angle that we're looking for. So this all translates into code as float slope angle is equal to vector two dot angle, and we give it our two directions, hit dot normal and vector two dot up. All right, and we can even do a little printout of the slope angle. And we'll only do that if uh, if i is equal to zero. In other words, this is the bottommost ray. All right, let's see if it's getting it right. If we look at our angle here, this is 32 degrees. So we should get a printout of 32 when we walk up there. And as you can see, it's correct. All right. So it would probably be uh, quite a good idea to define some angle for the maximum slope that we can actually climb. So I'll call this my max climb angle. And I'll set this to something high like 80. So now in our horizontal collisions, if i is equal to naught, and if uh, the slope angle is less than or equal to the max climb angle, we can stop printing out since we know that that is working. We're then going to call a new method we're going to create called climb slope. And uh, this is going to take in a reference to the velocity as well as slope angle. All right, so let's uh, go just below this vertical collisions method, create a void climb slope, takes in a ref vector three velocity and a float for the slope angle. Now, as I mentioned, we want our speed when climbing the slope to be the same as if we were moving normally. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat the velocity on the x-axis as the total distance up the slope that we want to move. Then using that target move distance and the slope angle, we want to figure out what our new velocity x and velocity y should be, which of course brings us to some wonderful trigonometry. So here's our slope, and uh, in white are the variables that we know. There's d, standing for our move distance, and there's theta, standing for our slope angle. And what we want to find out are the variables in red, x and y. Now, if you've done any trigonometry, you'll have heard that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so we can say that sine theta is equal to y over d. Now, we're trying to solve for y, so we divide 1 by the entire equation to get 1 over sine theta equals d over y. Then we multiply both sides by y to get y over sine theta equals d. And finally, we multiply both sides by sine theta to get y equals d multiplied by sine theta. And we can, of course, do pretty much the same process with cosine to solve for x. 
Okay, so as I said, the move distance is going to be equal to our velocity on the x-axis, but since this is the distance, we of course want to get the positive value of that, so we use mathf.absolute of velocity.x, and now we can calculate our new uh, values for velocity y and x using that trig we just looked at. So velocity.y is equal to mathf.sine of uh, slope angle, and since that's in degrees, we want to multiply it by mathf.degrees to radians, to of course convert it to radians, and now we want to multiply by move distance. Then for velocity.x, this is the same story except using cosine, slope angle multiplied by mathf.degrees to radians, multiplied by move distance, and now we want to maintain our direction, uh, whether we're going left or right on the x-axis, so we'll multiply by mathf.sign, uh, not sin, sign, of velocity.x. All right, let's go into Unity and see how this is looking. So, as you can see, we can climb our slope, and as long as this is uh, less than or equal to 80 degrees, we should be able to climb it just fine. Um, let me actually just make it greater than 80 degrees quickly, see what happens. Yeah, we can't climb it, it's just acting as a wall. So the slope climbing is roughly working, but uh, there's a bunch of little things that we need to fix. To start with the most serious, we can no longer jump when climbing up a slope. Back into MonoDevelop, there are two reasons for this jumping disorder. Um, the most simple of which is... Uh, since we're now climbing the slope, our velocity y is positive, meaning that in our vertical collisions we are detecting collisions above us, not below us, and our player can only jump if there are collisions below us. So, in our climb slope method, since we are climbing the slope, we can just uh, assume that we're standing on the ground and thus directly set collisions dot below equal to true. So that's the first uh, problem out of the way. The other problem is that whenever we try jump, um, our horizontal collisions get applied first, and it says, okay, I'm still climbing a slope, and uh, it just goes ahead and resets the velocity y, so um, it's no longer jumping, basically. So what we want to do is instead of directly setting velocity y, we want to create a float called something like... Uh, Let's call it climb velocity y. And we can set this equal to this whole bunch of stuff here. And now we'll do a check. We'll say if velocity dot y is greater than climb velocity y, then we can assume that we're jumping. And to check if that assumption is correct, let's just do a little printout. Jumping on slope and otherwise we'll do all of this, we'll uh, set our velocity x, we'll set our collisions below, and we'll set velocity y equal to the climb velocity y. So let's see if we can jump now. We can, and you can see that uh, jumping on slope is being called when we jump. So that's obviously working. Okay, so just one or two things that I want to quickly do before we go on to fix the other problems. Um, first of all, since we no longer need this printout, we need to delete that. And uh, it's a bit redundant to have an empty if statement, of course. So let's change this to less than or equal to, and we can delete the else part. Um, in the collision info, I'd also like to create a public bool for climbing slope, and uh, in reset we'll say climbing slope equals false, and uh, in the climb slope method, if we do climb the slope, we can also set collisions dot climbing slope is equal to true. Um, while we're at it, let's actually create a public float to store the slope angle and we're also going to want the slope 
angle old, in other words, the slope angle that we had the previous frame. And the way we'll set that is just in the reset method, we can say slope angle old is equal to slope angle. And after that, slope angle is equal to zero to reset it. All right, so uh, back in our climb slope method, we can also set collisions.slope angle equal to the slope angle. All right, now in the horizontal collisions, um, if we're climbing the slope, we don't necessarily want to check the rest of the rays because it might interfere with our slope climbing. So the only time that we want to check uh, the other rays is if we're not actually climbing the slope. So if not collisions.climbing slope, or if uh, the slope angle is actually greater than the, uh, the max climb angle, then we want, to, uh, we want to check the rest of the rays for collisions. Now uh, let's have a look at some more problems that we're having. So uh, the next is, you can see that we're not actually always um, properly sitting on the slope when we're climbing up it. And the reason for this is, uh, say we're moving along and at this point our ray hits and it says, okay, we're climbing up the slope, so it starts moving like this. What we actually want to do is once it hits the slope, we want to move it the rest of the distance to the slope and only then start actually climbing the slope. So over here in our horizontal collisions, um, just before we call climb slope, we're going to create a float distance to slope start is equal to zero. And now if the slope angle is not equal to collisions dot slope angle old, in other words, we're starting to climb a new slope, then the distance to the slope start is going to be equal to hit dot distance minus, of course, skin width. And uh, we'd also want to say velocity dot x minus equals distance to slope start multiplied by our direction. So um, we're subtracting that distance to the slope start from the velocity x so that when we call the climb slope method, it uh, only uses the velocity x that it will have once it actually reaches the slope. Now, of course, we want to add that, uh, that distance to slope start back on to the velocity once we finish climbing the slope. So afterwards, we'll say velocity.x plus equals distance to slope start multiplied by direction x. All right, so let's save and give that a go. As you can see, we are now properly sitting on the slope. And uh, if we were to have another slope over here, we uh, climb that smoothly as well. All right, as far as I'm aware, there are two more problems that we need to fix, um, just to quickly demonstrate them both. The one is uh, if there is an obstacle overhead as we're climbing up the slope, we sort of uh, jitter around. And uh, the other is if there is an obstacle that we collide with from the side while climbing the slope, we bounce up and down. So we need to fix those. Let's uh, start with this one. So the reason for this um, sort of bouncing behavior is that uh, we're climbing up the slope and we're detecting a collision from the side and we are now reducing our velocity x so that we don't go through the collision, but um, we're not updating our velocity on the y-axis. So what we want to say is uh, if we are actually um, climbing a slope, so we can say if collisions dot climbing slope, then we want to set the velocity y so that uh, it's still sitting on the slope when we move with this amount of velocity x. Now, of course, we don't know our move distance anymore. 
So uh, we can't use the sine or cosine method that I showed earlier, but um, we can do pretty much the same thing using tangent. So we'll say velocity dot y is equal to math f dot tangent of collisions dot slope angle, and make sure that you use collisions dot slope angle, not simply slope angle, since slope angle is not necessarily the angle that we're climbing, since it's updated with uh, each of the rays, and the one we're climbing is only the one where i equals zero. Um, so, as, as I say, collisions dot slope angle multiplied by math f dot degrees to radians multiplied by the absolute value of velocity dot x. Okay, let's save that and see if it's working. It is. That's good news. So, we just have one more thing to fix for our climbing slopes. Um, of course, descending slopes is another story. You can see we're bouncing all over the place when we descend them, but uh, we'll worry about that next episode. So, the thing to look into now is collisions above us. Okay. All right, now, the reason for this problem is pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw with the horizontal collisions, where we collide with something, so velocity x is being reduced, but the velocity y was remaining the same, so we had to recalculate it for the slope. Um, here, if there's a collision above us, of course, velocity y is being reduced, so it stands to reason that we need to recalculate velocity x. So, let's go ahead and do that. If collisions dot climbing slope, then velocity dot x is equal to, and uh, I just quickly want to explain the tangent this time. All right, so we know our slope angle theta, and we know our y velocity, and we're solving for our x velocity. So we start off by saying tan theta is equal to y over x, and then we multiply both sides by x to get x multiplied by tan theta equals y, and then we divide both sides by tan theta to get x is equal to y divided by tan theta. So let's type this up quickly. Velocity x is equal to velocity dot y divided by math f dot tangent of collisions dot slope angle multiplied by, as always, math f dot degrees to radians multiplied by, to keep our direction, math f dot sine with a g of velocity dot x. All right, let's see if this works. Okay. It would appear that victory is ours. Um, we just need to make 100% sure that everything is working. Oh, I can't rotate this properly. That everything is working on the opposite side. Um, in case we forgot to multiply by our direction somewhere. No, that seems to be working fine. Um, put this here, test that out. It all seems to be working very well. So, that is climbing slopes. In the next episode, we will look at descending slopes. Until then, farewell.